This is a continuation of the video that I just put up the other day on scabbard tooling. So this is the scabbard tooling. We did this with the swivel knife. First time using this. It's actually really easy to get used to and some people have said that you don't really need a swivel knife. You can use an X-Acto knife. I think someone said that in the comments and that's probably true. A very large portion of the tooling that we're doing here is, is just with the punch. So the best way to make those punches look nice, I think, is to make sure that they overlap as, as few times as possible. It's all about consistency, so we want to be as consistent as possible. I want to make sure that you see what I'm doing. Last time I used this, my hand, I think, was in the way most of the time, and I didn't realize it until I looked at the footage and my hand was blocking a lot of the work. So this time I'm going to try to focus on showing you, you know, how I move the knife. The swivel knife is something that I've been getting used to and I feel like at the end of this project, I feel really comfortable with it at this point. The key is getting used to the way it moves. When the leather is really wet, it's going to slide right through the leather. Of course, you'll need to have a sharp edge on the knife, but um, just making sure that you're moving your hand, you're flowing, you're causing the knife to flow through the leather and you're not scraping really you're causing it to flow and what I mean by that is that you're just really aware that you can um, you can turn the the knife to the right or the left with a, a twist just a slow twist to the right or the left and just getting comfortable with that turn um, it will make all the difference in how smooth it looks how uh, how complete this looks when you're done and I gotta say there's lots of places where you can see my lines aren't very smooth but um, as I got further along in the project it felt more comfortable making those lines I lifted the knife fewer times so keeping the knife pressed down, down on the leather keeping it flowing through the leather um, is just really important you're gonna have better looking results I think if you keep the knife down now it doesn't mean you have to always keep it down if you're making a circle you probably want to lift it when you're halfway and maybe go from the opposite side the nice thing about the swivel knife is that you don't have to keep moving the project and turning it around and turning it upside down and then turning it back because you can move in every direction with the knife. One of the things that sort of threw me off when I started using this knife was the fact that whenever you make a mark, you're really drawing it towards yourself. You're never pushing it away from yourself. You can see which point of the knife I've got pressed into the leather, and that's the point that's further away from me. That's like always the point that I'm gonna have pressed into the leather. And I'm always pulling it towards me, uh, either clockwise or counterclockwise, but never ever pushing it away from me. Now the punch and the swivel knife aren't the only tools that we're using here. There's a stylus that I've got. It's got like a flat edge, um, sort of shaped like a spatula maybe. And uh, you can use that to outline, to do some outlining. Now I mentioned in the previous video that Peter Johnson had a tool that he made that it looks like in the picture that he posted that it has more of a flat edge. And I think that's probably really beneficial uh, rather than a sharp, sharp point like my swivel knife. Um, it appears that he was using a hammer to move that rather than using a sharp blade. The reason I think it's beneficial is that it seems to create a lot of space uh, or at least a few millimeters, maybe a couple of millimeters between the floral pattern, the leaves, and the background. And so it sets them off more. When you put the punch in, um, you, I'm always aware of where the edge is and how close am I coming to these leaves. Um, because if you go over the edge of the leaf, it starts to look sloppy. So you want to make sure you're staying outside of the leaf. But at the same time, if you leave too much space between the leaf and your background, it's not going to really look nice. But if you had a little bit of a border there, like a thicker line for the, uh, for the leaves, it might actually look really nice. And so I might try that next time. You've probably noticed this. The scabbard moves a lot. Every time I hit it with a punch, you know, it moves. And it can be pretty annoying to have this project that you're working on continue to shift across the table or your working space. 
So next time I probably will cradle it. You'll probably want to do that maybe with towels and maybe clamp it down and make sure you're not putting too much pressure on it because you don't want to leave marks in the leather, but you want to have it clamped down somehow. Now I'm pretty close to being finished with this project at this point, so there's not any reason I feel like for me to clamp it down, spend some extra time doing that, but it's something that I would do at the very beginning if I do this project again. I used a conditioner as well. I pointed that out in the previous upload. It's not just water that I'm applying, it's water plus a conditioner, and I think that helps. Uh, it won't cause it to be too dried out, and it does seem to keep the leather really supple. In fact, it's so soft at times, I could practically use the punch by hand. Just for the sake of consistency, I wanted to make sure that I was using the hammer the entire time. As we get down to the bottom, you know, we're getting closer and closer to finishing off all of the tooling that's going to be required. And for a long time, I've been thinking about how I'm going to finish this. So specifically, what I'm thinking about, what I'm worried about, is how do I make this design pop out? Um, I could use the antiquing that I've used before. It's like a shoe polish. It's, um, it's supposed to leave a dark, you know, black or very dark uh, residue or stain um, just in, in crevices and the cracks and and all of the tooling and, and it looks really nice on projects that I've seen but you know I'm not an expert in any way I've said that so many times and so I'm thinking should I brush it on um, that's my initial thought maybe I should brush it on and so I made a little scrap here of uh, some different punches and some uh, some tooling and I'm gonna brush it on and just see what happens now the problem really is that once you brush it on, um, you have to remove it, right? So how precise is it going to be? Is it going to smear when I try to remove it? Is it going to just be a big mess? Um, these are things I've been thinking about and I'm just going to give it a try. Um, but it was pretty clear that once I brushed it on, it was not possible to be very precise. So then the next thought was maybe what I should do is I'll just take a paintbrush and I'll apply the stain instead and I'll just, you know, paint the different leaves with a stain. That's what I started with, that's what I tried, but the stain started to spread everywhere. It wouldn't stay just on the leaves. And so, sort of going back to plan A, maybe I'll just put the, um, the, the antiquing down and brush it off. Um, when I started doing that, it just, no, neither of those two methods were going to work at all because I couldn't be quick and precise and and so at this point really got worried that I was going to be ruining the project so I just decided to go back to uh, what I've done in the past which is sort of just glob it on there that, that's actually the way they want you to do it so I globbed it on got it uh, brushed off and then I put the stain down really quickly or as quickly as I could hoping that I wouldn't have spots from those two initial trials there so using a paper towel, I brushed it off to see what kind of damage there was there and see if we could still see those spots from the initial two trials. But uh, good news is that neither of those could really be seen. I was really worried that I had ruined the project by attempting, you know, one way and then attempting another way and realizing that neither of those ways was really going to work and I had to go back to the original plan, which seemed to work. When it dried, after an hour or so, a couple hours maybe, um, it lightened a little bit and it became a little bit more splotchy, a little less uniform, but it still has a nice look to it and um, you know at this point I realized something. All of the leaves are flat, uh, they're two-dimensional, they lack detail. So if I had a chance to do this project over and maybe I'll do this in the future, those really should have you know different um, little uh, designs within them, stems and I don't know, the little parts of the leaf to make it look three-dimensional. But it still looks pretty cool. I took it outside to take some pictures and um, I think it turned out pretty well. I really do think it deserves a belt. Like, not just a regular belt, but a, a belt that's tooled and that matches. Overall, I'd say this is my favorite of the three scabbards that I've made on camera. Um, I think it's more interesting looking. Um, if we make a belt to match it at some point uh, with tooling on the belt, it should stand out pretty well. So thanks for spending some time with me today and watching this video, and I'll catch you later.